the next talk by Azad Dhar. Yes, here. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, refolding of bovine serum albumin by Gemini surfactant via artificial chaperone protocol. Very simple. Thank you very much for giving me chance to present my work here. Uh, actually, I'm going to present the experimental results regarding the refolding of bovine serum albumin by Gemini surfactants via artificial chaperone protocol. The plan of the talk would be this introduce uh, the protein folding, then introduction to the artificial chaperone protocol for protein refolding, then the objectives of the present work, the motivation, results, and then conclusions. Well, we all of you, all of you know that uh, protein folding is a physical process by which a polypeptide folds into a characteristic and three-dimensional uh, structure from the random coils. Now, the, uh, this protein folding, it involves the formation of the secondary structure, normally involves the alpha helix and the beta sheet type of structures. Uh, then it re gets uh, folded into the three-dimensional structure known as the tertiary structure. The coordinate structure involves the assembly or co-assembly of different subunits uh, which are already folded. This uh, protein folding is basically, it is guided by the hydrophobic interactions, the formation of intramolecular hydrogen bonding, Van der Waals forces. And uh, as we know that uh, this particular process is very much opposed by the conformational entropy. The protein folding itself, uh, it is dependent on the solvent, what type of solvent we are using, whether we are using the aqueous polar solvent or the non-polar solvents like uh, lipids, uh, the concentration of salts, temperature, and obviously the presence of the chaperones. Chaperones are actually the proteins which are present inside the living organisms which help in uh, proper folding of a protein. Not only that, they do also have the property of uh, uh, retaining the uh, protein in its folded state. <coughs> However, this protein folding is always uh, this, uh, um, uh, associated with what we call as the misfolding and the aggregation. Misfolding actually means uh, it is the error in the folding pattern and it is generally caused in the living systems uh, by mutation or by some reduced chaperone functions. And the aggregation as such, it is uh, because of the partial unfolding during the thermal or oxidative stresses. The aggregation of fibril structures containing the misfolded beta sheets reach proteins called amyloids. And there may be also the mistakes in the primary structure which leads to the phenomena of aggregation. But the consequences of this uh, misfolding and aggregation usually in vivo include the neurodegenerative diseases like uh, Alzheimer's disease or we have the Parkinson's disease and others. Similarly, the in vitro, uh, there is a very important thing in industrial process that is the production or large scale production of the recombinant proteins. And in recombinant proteins, the most important problem is the misfolding and aggregation. So there must be some attempts in order to prevent the misfolding and aggregation in vitro systems. So that uh, because uh, the biotechn biotechnological industry that, uh, that uh, the uh, production of the proteins does depend on the, this, how uh, properly the pro protein, fold, pro uh, pro protein is folded. Now, in this endeavor, uh, very important uh, protocol was developed by Rosima and Gelman from University of Medicine. What they developed? They developed a, uh, this technique known as the artificial chaperone technique, in which uh, uh, that, that uh, actually involves the refolding of the denatured protein into its back into its native state by using the two-step process. The two-step process that involves basically uh, we take a denatured protein, which we denature with the help of the gonadium hydrochloride or the urea. And then that denatured protein is diluted to the non-denaturating concentrations of the gonadium, gonadium uh, chloride in presence of a detergent. Detergent has the ability to get bound to the protein surface. If it is a denatured protein, then uh, 
if we add detergent to it, dilute it, add detergent to it, it gets adsorbed on the surface due to the hydrophobic interactions. As a result, uh, uh, this creates the aggregates on the polymer backbone or the protein backbone. This creates what is called as a polymer detergent complex. This polymer detergent complex has the ability uh, to prevent the aggregate, aggregation of the proteins uh, in, in, in bulk solutions. As a result, not only the aggregation is prevented, but also it prevents the proper folding of the protein as well. What we term this, uh, this uh, step as, we call this as a capturing step. And the agent that is a detergent, we call it as the capturing agent. So the protein is in first step, it is captured with the help of a detergent molecule so that it prevents it is further aggregation or intramolecular intra aggregation as well as intermolecular aggregation. Intramolecular as well as intermolecular because the conditions which di uh, di dictate the aggregation, intramolecular aggregation, the same conditions uh, are there for uh, intramolecular aggregation because both of the processes they are uh, related to the hydrophobic interactions as well as the extent of hydrogen bonding or so on. Now, in the next step, what is being done, the cyclodextrin is added. Cyclodextrin is basically a cyclic, uh, chiral, cyclic, torus-shaped uh, macromolecule, these molecules, uh, which have the ability to specifically bind with the surfactants and uh, strip off the surfactant from the surface of the protein. Once the surfactant is stripped off from the protein, the protein gets enough chance to get uh, reverted to its native state by getting properly folded. In this particular case, in this particular case, the stripping agent, when it is, when the stripping agent is used, it is important to know, note here that the, uh, this, uh, either the misfolding can occur or proper folding can occur or even aggregation may take place. Now, it depends on the uh, uh, it depends on the kinetics of how quickly these uh, this, uh, surfactant molecules are being stripped off by the uh, cyclodextrin or the stripping agent. This type of uh, work, uh, this type of work uh, was uh, <coughs> actually introduced in 1996-95 uh, by Professor this, uh, uh, Rosma and Gelman. So far people have used the single chain ionic surfactants in order to achieve the protein refolding in vitro. Sodium dodecyl sulfate, styled trimethyl aluminum bromide were used as a capturing agent. But in all these cases, the problem was that the high concentration of these surfactants was required in order to capture the protein. Once the high surfactant concentration is used, the stripping agent is not able to strip off the surfactant very quickly. As a result, the aggregation is normally followed. So, in order to prevent that, <coughs> we, tried, we tried to use the different type of the surfactants, that is the gymni surfactants. Gymni surfactants, they contain the two hydrophobic groups and the true hydrophilic groups, which are separated by a spacer, hydrophobic spacer. This spacer uh, can be of any different lengths, like it can be of the four carbon length, five carbon lengths, or six carbon lengths. Here we used, in this case, bis uh, still dimethyl uh, ammonium alkane dibromides with the different spacers, termed as G4, G5, and G6. The single chain counterpart of it was also used in order to have the comparison, and then the cyclodextrins were used as uh, stripping agents, alpha cyclodextrin and beta cyclodextrin having the uh, this uh, six glucose moieties and the seven glucose moieties respectively and the methylated beta cyclodextrin in which all the hydroxyl groups were methylated so that it becomes more hydrophobic The protein that we made use of that was bovine serum albumin, which is the most important protein in the plasma, contributing 60% of the total globular protein. And obviously, uh, as all of you know, that's a carrier of the fatty acids. And its primary structure consists of 585 amino acids 
and the stru secondary structure has 67% of the alpha helix. The BSA, proposed BSA structure is a heart-shaped, consisting of three homologous domains which are divided into nine loops and they are <coughs> connected by di disulfide bonds. So what was the motivation of the present work? The earlier work that we did that was related with the interaction of uh, single chain CTAB surfactant and the Gemini surfactant with the serum albumins. Here we use, we didn't use the denatured serum albumin, but we used directly the uh, native protein. Uh, and we studied the interaction of CTAB and Gemini with the serum albumins. The results were that uh, significantly lower concentration of G4 compared to CTAB induce large unfolding of the serum albumins. As you can see here, the percent alpha helical content, it was decreased to a larger extent in case of human serum albumin, rabbit serum albumin, and the bovine serum albumin. It was reduced to a larger extent at the very low concentration, almost 10 times less concentration than that of the CTAB. It indicates that at the uh, this uh, at such a low concentration gymni surfactants are able to uh, unfold the protein because they are known to act as a denaturants if you add it to the uh, uh, this native protein because they get absorbed on the surface as a result the uh, <coughs> the protein gets opened up this strong binding of the gymni is because of the uh, electrostatic and the hydrophobic forces which are very much higher in case of Gemini because of the presence of two hydrophobic groups and the two uh, hydrophilic groups. <coughs> the next important thing that we uh, observed in this case was that uh, in case of CTAB, we found that as the concentration of the uh, single chain surfactant was increased, the alpha helical content of the protein decreased and then remained almost constant. But in this case, in case of human serum albumin, but in this case it decreased and then it showed an increase after a certain concentration. We tried to explain it, uh, not uh, by using some theory, but uh, just we gave us some uh, hypothesis about that. It was that as the concentration of the surfactant is increased, it gets absorbed on the protein surface, forms the aggregates, and above certain concentration, the gymni uh, surfactants have the property of undergoing some sort of shape changes. These shape changes increase the hydrophobic character of those uh, micro, these of those aggregates. As a result, it helps in uh, refolding of the protein at the higher concentration. But as still the concentration is increased, then almost the refolding was constant. I mean, there was no uh, no refolding once again. This was because uh, because the polymer uh, surface or the protein surface normally remains uh, this. Uh, it gets saturated because of these aggregates. Now, <coughs> as far as the results of our work is concerned, we made use of the circular circular dichroism. Uh, in order to investigate what is the uh, extent of the alpha helical content that is increased once we make use of the uh, gymni surfactants in artificial chaperone protocol. CD spectroscopy, as we know, it enables us to predict the changes in the secondary structure, secondary and tertiary structure of the protein by observing the changes in the ellipticity in uh, far and near UV region. Ellipticity of uh, this uh, structure is related with the CD, that is the difference between the absorbances towards the uh, left and right circularly polarized lights, which is related with that. So when we plot this, uh, 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 this ellipticity with the wavelength, we get the CD spectra, and that shows two negative bands corresponding to the uh, 208 and 222 nanometers, which is characteristic for the proteins containing the alpha helical structures. Now here you can see that in case of BSA, the uh, uh, this uh, using K2D uh, this uh, secondary structure server, we made use uh, we uh, determined the value of 67 percent of the alpha helical content uh, in the bovine serum albumin, which is uh, uh, I mean <coughs> uh, which is uh, also published in the literature like that. So once the protein is denatured with the help of the gonadium chloride gonadinium, gonadinium uh, chloride, it completely loses its alpha helical content because of its denaturation. Now, if the denatured sample is again diluted, 
to the concentrations which are non denaturing concentration of the gonadium chloride it gets refolded again up to almost 46 percent but such type of dilution has been known to be the aggregation prone pathway it may lead to the creation it may lead to the uh, this uh, it may lead to the uh, 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 this uh, uh, regaining of the alpha helical content but simultaneously there is a possibility that uh, there is a there is always a possibility that it undergoes aggregation and that we will confirm on the basis of the dls studies that we did <coughs> as far as the ctab is concerned and the cyclodextrins that we used in the artificial chaperone protocol we found that in case of the denatured protein in case of the diluted bsa when the 0 0.01 or 0.2 mol millimolar of uh, ctab was added followed by what we call as the this uh, meth methylated beta cyclodextrin it was found that there is no change in the alpha helical content of the system of the bsa this indicated that this indicates that the uh, that um, this ctab is not able is not a very good capturing agent in the artificial chaperone protocol and artificial chaperone protocol is not uh, this uh, uh, very efficient in case of the ctab however uh, here you can see that as the concentration of the ctab is increased as the concentration of the surfactant is increased uh, in order to capture the protein in the initial stage we find that at the constant concentration obviously of uh, cyclodextrin here we find that there is no change in the alpha helical content that is the elliptic corresponding to 222 that we have plotted here indicating that uh, no stripping agent where uh, this uh, successful in uh, re refolding the protein uh, in presence of the ctab however in case of gymni there were the encouraging results you can see that at the level of 0 0.005 millimolar G5 when it is used as a capturing agent plus when we add the agent uh, methylated beta cyclodextrin it is able to refold the protein back to its normal to its native form. It means that at a very low concentration of the gymni it has the ability to capture the protein and since the low concentration of the gymni is used the stripping agent is equally very uh, this effective in stripping it off from the protein thereby uh, enabling the protein to undergo the uh, this uh, folding to its native state and again we see here the methylated b uh, methylated beta cyclodextrin was very much effective in uh, this uh, <coughs> in increasing the alpha helical content of the system Now the comparison of uh, the surfactant containing the four spacers, five spacers, and six spacers show that the four spacer gymni surfactant was not very much effective in regaining the uh, this uh, folding uh, proper folding of the uh, folding of the BSA, but the gymni G5 and G6 were. It indicated that that G5 and G6 they have the strong interaction uh, and they can be very well used as a capturing agent. Uh, 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 this in the artificial chaperone protocol. <coughs> now, <coughs> we used also the CD, this uh, intrinsic fluorescence spectroscopy in order to analyze it. Intrinsic fluoresc fluorescence spectroscopy is an important uh, technique which probes, uh, which is useful probe to study the changes in the protein structure by observing the changes in its fluorescence properties. Um, this uh, BSA contains the amino acids like tyrosine and tryptophan and these two residues they are very much they get excited at 280 nanometers and they fluoresce this fluorescence intensity can be easily observed and that particular fluorescence intensity is directly related to the environment in which the tyrosine and tryptophan residues are placed if they are present in the hydrophobic environment they give the very high fluorescence intensity However, if they are present in the hydrophilic environment, that is in the aqueous environment, their uh, uh, fluorescence intensity is very low. As we can see here, once the protein is folded, the fluorescence intensity is high. But once the protein is unfolded, then in, uh, this uh, fluorescence intensity drops. As we can say, as we can see here, that as the protein is again diluted to the non-denaturating concentration of the uh, this uh, uh, gonadinium hydrochloride, it is 
uh, folding is has increased. But whether this folding is due to aggregation or it is because of the proper refolding of the protein, this can be easily said become, uh, by using the CD spectroscopy. As I told you earlier, the CD spectroscopy uh, say, uh, I mean, uh, it shows that uh, the alpha helical content is regained when the system is diluted <coughs> uh, to the non-denaturating concentrations of the, uh, this uh, denaturant. As we can see from the fluorescent spectroscopy as well, the style trimethyl aluminum bromide at such uh, concentrations is not effective in making the protein folding uh, this uh, up to the native BSA. However, the gymnosurfactant at a very low concentration is able to do it. The dynamic light scattering technique was used in order to find out that what is the whether the aggregation had occurred in case of protein or not. DNS has been used to monitor changes in the sizes of the proteins during denaturation and renaturation. We can easily see here that if we take a native protein, a single peak comes there in, uh, uh, in the corresponding to the hydrodynamic radius of uh, 4.1 nanometers. And this value is very close to the value that we have found in the literature. Now, <coughs> as the system is diluted, as the system is diluted to the non-denaturating concentrations of the gonadinium hydrochloride, we find that there is a large amount of the aggregation uh, hydrodynamic uh, radius increasing up to 227. This indicates that dilution does involve the refolding of the protein to a certain extent, but simultaneously it shows uh, there is a uh, aggregation in the system. And this aggregation uh, indicates this aggregation indicates that uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, denaturation uh, by using the dilution, uh, sorry, this uh, dilution is an aggregation prone pathway which is proved in the literature. And finally, in case of by adding the different type of surfactants and uh, the uh, in artificial chaperone protocol, we find that the aggregation, uh, what is the result of the aggregation? You can see. When we take the diluted denatured uh, BSA, the uh, this uh, hydrodynamic radius was 227 but when we added the 0.1 millimolar of ctab in the capture as a capturing agent it is aggregation was decreased and it is known that surfactants do decrease the aggregation but once the stripping agent was used there was no decrease in the aggregation but there was an increase in the aggregation indicating that the uh, in, in, indicating that such a high concentration of CTAB which is used there, but in artificial chaperone protocol, this takes a longer time. In or this takes a longer time to strip it off so that the the aggregation is uh, seen. But in case of Gemini, you can see the addition of the Gemini along with the uh, methyl beta cyclodextrin. We see that almost the uh, this hydrodynamic radius reaches to the native BSA, indicating that it not only prevents the aggregation, but also, as far as the CD is concerned, it also uh, properly refolds the system. In, conclu in conclusion, I may say that this multi-technique approach confirmed that the refolding of gonadinium hydrochloride denatured BSA can be achieved by a very small concentrations of gymni surfactants at which normally the single chain surfactants are not effective. And this also suggests that use of such type of surfactants for refolding of gymni, for refolding of proteins, while this technique might address one of the most pressing demands of the biotechnological industry for development of inexpensive and efficient folding agents. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, so I, I got a little bit lost when you were talking about the CD data. Yeah. Uh, I understood how you could tell that you had managed to unfold, yeah. but I didn't understand how you could conclude that you that you know you hadn't prevented aggregation so you said you know you, you do see uh, indication that there is refolding yep. be because of the increase in hel helical content yeah but then you can't tell apart whether it's aggregated or not is that, did DLS, i understand you correctly yeah dls actually uh, shows no, this was uh, cd data the, the cd shows the alpha helical content while as the dls shows the aggregation whether it has aggregated or not. The two are correlated. 
No, so when, when you were showing, can you go back to the slide that uh, n previous? Yeah, yeah, next one, next one. So here, I understood you to be saying something about aggregation. Did, did I misunderstand you? Yeah, I think. Okay, fine. Then. Because I am just saying uh, something about, because uh, uh, alpha helical content can be easily seen from the CD spectrum. Correct. And uh, aggregation studies can be done by using DLS or some other type of... Okay. Uh, so you said you can't tell. Yeah, here I can't tell. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Sir, as CTAB and Gemini surfactants are cationic surfactant. Uh, is there any specific reason to use these cationic and or we can implement uh, other uh, anionic or uh, amphiphilic uh, surfactants? Yeah, basically right now we are trying uh, different type of surfactant even in single state as well as in the combinations. Not only for the, uh, the widely studied protein like BSA but also for the enzymes like xanthine oxidase. And uh, in fact uh, the... Uh, results are encouraging for the mixed system, mix, mixed surfactant systems, rather than for the simple type of uh, cationic or anionic. Uh, okay, sir. Had you said that a CTAB and DSR, if they are highly concentrated, uh, sorry, they are highly concentrated, so that's why you are not using. Uh, one, uh, one more important thing is here that uh, BSA has the negative charge. Okay, sir. So it is better to use the cationic surfactants rather than going for the anionic surfactants. Okay. Because once you use the anionic, so because of repulsion, they won't get uh, this, uh, they won't uh, form the protein surfactant complex very easily. Okay, sir, can you tell the W0 ratio for uh, Gemini surfactant you use? Uh, sorry, the concentration otherwise? For what? Uh, uh, for uh, of uh, um, uh, bivine protein. In the single state? Yes, sir. It was 0 0.005 millimolar. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, how general is this method of uh, artificial chaperon refolding? Is in what class of proteins uh, is it supposed to be effective for? Uh, it has been used for so many different type of uh, enzymes as well, where the activity has also been observed. I mean, it has been followed. The activity results have been also followed. Uh, some kinases, uh, uh, higher, uh, this uh, anhydrases and uh, oxidases, and uh, now we have tried for oxidases and uh, this serums. So you have to choose your surfactant according to the protein which you are handling? Or yeah, uh, obviously. Okay. So it and depends on what, what type of charge it gives. Yeah. What is it is isoelectric point? Uh, uh, according to the isoelectric point, you can choose the, what type of, uh, because mm -hmm. it de depends on the, in what uh, pH range you are working. Mm -hmm. So if it is iso, uh, this pH range is near about isoelectric point, then you can have the, you can use any, gym, any, any surfactant. But if it is uh, this away from then, then you can use mm -hmm. The Gimni account to discharge. Okay, and also, uh, you said that G4 uh, was uh, not as effective as G5 and yeah. G6. So even it, that could change for a different protein. Right? Yeah, and it was uh, observed that it is uh, it was effective, but only at higher concentration. Since we want to avoid here the higher concentration in order to yeah. prevent, in order to in order to not to have the aggregation. So that's why we um, this uh, chose G5 and G6 and. G4 could not be because then we had to use higher concentration. Yeah. It would mean same thing as that yeah, of CTAB. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm sorry, I'm not clear. I don't find your DLS data very convincing. Oh, no, so uh, are you working with detergents uh, at the concentration at which you're working? Are you above the CMC? Are you above the critical micelle concentration? Is it detergent actually, forming micelles? Actually, we scanned it below CAC as well as B, above CAC. So the concentration which you acquired DLS spectra, I mean, you acquired your DLS distributions, yeah. is it uh, above your CMC? Actually, when we took the, um, uh, this uh, uh, protein at 40 milligrams per ml, then the DLS data was very erratic. But w then we diluted it to 0.2 mg per ml. What micromolar is that? Um, I don't know. I don't know. No, because... Uh, Detergents will scatter, they form micelles, right? So you have to be very careful with yeah, your buffer it is control. Obviously, it is below. This 0.005, it is below. It is, this, uh, it is uh, not forming micelles? No, no, it is not forming the micelles in the bulk. But it is, it is aggregating on the uh, protein. That, we, that we, we can analyze by using the fluorescence. Uh, uh, that we can analyze by using fluorescence. Um, in addition to that, we can have the, this, uh, uh, what we call I1 by I3 values in the fluorescence. That, that can detect whether the uh, this, uh, aggregates are being formed on the protein f uh, or not. 
No, because if you have aggregation happening, that could be one of the reasons why your CD signals don't go back to native because CD is very sensitive to scattering. Yeah, yeah, so you have true. aggregates, it makes perfect sense that your CD signals are not reliable because mm -hmm. CD spectroscopy is uh, susceptible to light scattering artifacts. So, I mean, no, what essentially I'm trying to say is that DLS data, when you look at CTAP plus cyclodextrin, the classical protocol yeah. that's used for artificial chaperones, you still have some kind of oligomeric population, some 20 nanometers or something. Yeah. It doesn't go back to native, right? No, no, no. What is that structure? Uh, I mean, what, what is it that's uh, happening there? There is some kind of aggregate. Yeah, uh, in case of CTAB, you mean? Yeah, even in your protocol, I don't, I mean, I'm not sure that uh, it's so convincing. Sorry. Uh, you have 17 nanometers, that's not native. That is some kind of oligomeric structure. This, this. No, with, uh, with your Gemini 4. Uh, this. Yeah. Actually, this is the uh, BSC. This is for the BSC in presence of the Gemini surfactant. Right, so I'm, I'm saying that there is some it kind is of oligomeric native. structure. It's not native. You see, it, if you see BSC in it is, uh, this diluted form, it is 227. So, okay. that, the, so the other thing is 227 is hardly something you can sort of trust in DLS. It could be due to dust. You know, you know photo no, no, correlation spectroscopy no, is very yeah, sensitive that, that, to dust. Yeah, so. actually, we actually uh, this, uh, did it by using uh, uh, some sort of filters and we filtered it. You and filter through point yeah, two, but even then. You will have dust Maybe. artifacts. Yeah. But still, the, 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 uh, it is also reported in the literature that whenever we dilute it, there are certain other indications that they, it does aggregate. And yeah, I'm a, very sure it does aggregate, yeah. actually. I think uh, I'll take it outside. it's better okay. that you seem to have a detailed question, yeah, so it may be a good idea that you discuss uh, uh, personally. Okay. Uh, let's thank the speaker if there are no further questions. And... Uh, let me thank all the speakers for sticking to the time.